Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems, GMAT math problems, out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You must have the book in front of you to be able to follow the work because I'm not going to write down every problem on the blackboard. I'm not going to put, write down any problem on the blackboard. As a matter of fact, you have to read the problems yourself. We are solving uh, today some multiple choice problems on page number 67. On page 67, beginning with number 34. If after having watched the entire video, you decide that you would like to work with me, that you find this useful, fruitful, and that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire my services as your tutor, you can reach me at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Number 34. In number 34, we're buying some doors and we are told that we bought, we bought five hollow doors and six solid doors. So apparently we're buying hollow doors and solid doors. We are further told that the regular price the regular price of the solid door is twice the cost of a hollow door. Is twice the cost of a regular price of a hollow door. In other words, solid doors cost us twice as much as the hollow doors. That's exactly what we just said. But right now we are told right now we are told that they have a sale going on on solid door. Solid doors are twenty five percent off. All of this information we have to keep track of. All every bits of every bits of information. We are, we are further told that the regular price, regular price of a hollow door is equal to $40. The question simply is, how much did we pay? A straightforward, simple enough question as long as we pay attention to what is going on. So let's begin our story. As we know, the regular price of a hollow door is $40. But we are also told that regular price of a solid door is two times hollow doors which implies this implies that the price of a solid door must be eighty dollars because it's two times this but but we paid but it's 25 percent off right now it's 25 percent off which means solid door now is only sixty dollars 25 percent one quarter of eighty is twenty so right now they are going for sixty dollars. That's it. We are done. We bought five. So here's the price of a hollow door. P with subscript H is the hollow door. We bought five of those right here. Plus we bought six of the solid doors. So here is the price of the solid door. And that's it. That's all we have to figure out. And that's it. Price of a hollow door we are told is forty dollars. We bought six of the solid doors, and solid door we just figured out are sixty dollars. They are usually eighty dollars, but because of the sale, they are sixty dollars because they're twenty-five percent off. And that's all. That's all there is. Six times sixty is three sixty, and five times forty would be two hundred. It's five hundred and sixty dollars. Five hundred and sixty dollars. Number thirty-five. In number 35, we are told that we are buying 25 units. Total is 25. And what it is that we are buying of 25, if you're interested, you can read the book yourself. Okay? We are buying M, R, and W. We are told the number of W has to be more than number of M, and number of W has to be more than number of R. The question simply is, what is the least least possible number of W's that we can buy given the fact that we want to buy more of W compared to M and we want to buy more of W compared to R 
and all together we are buying 25 units all together we are buying 25 units well if we are buying 25 units and of three different kinds M, R and W if we will divide that by three we'll get eight and one third but we cannot buy eight and one third of anything it has to be integers they have to be whole numbers and we want to buy least of W if you want to buy the least of W we want to make the M and the R as high as possible the highest of M and R we can have is 8 and 8 and that will make W the least and still be more than M and still be more than R W would have to be 9 W would have to be 9 because we have made the other two numbers as high as possible as you can see the highest they can go is 8 uh, and that will make this one the least amount of possible and still be more than M and R number 36 number 36 says that we bought A for $250 we bought B for $375. We sold both for a total profit of $250. So you bought A, these are these are A and B are two bicycles, and they're calling them bicycle A and bicycle B, or perhaps I'm calling them, I don't know. You read the problem as I said? Yes, they, they don't call them A and B, I'm calling them A and B. So we bought bicycle A for $250, bicycle B for $375, and then we turned around and we sold both of them for a combined total profit of $250. This is a combined total profit. We were told that we sold one for $450. The question is, what's the profit? on the other and that's in that's in capital letter with a, with a quotation around it because that's what we're interested in they told us they're telling us that we sold one of them for 450 but they don't they don't tell us which one we sold for 450 one of these two bicycles we were able to sell for 450 and if that happened the question is what's the profit on the other one so we are interested only on the profit on the other one we don't care about the one that we sold for 450 make sure you understand that we do not care how much profit we made on 450. We want to find out what's the profit on the other one. Let's see what we can do. So here's the cost. The cost is we bought the first one for 250. We bought the second one for 375. Looks like 625 dollars was the total cost. Was the total cost of buying the two bicycle, and then we went ahead. And maybe with a profit of 250. So we must have sold the bicycle for $475 combined. Combined. We sold one. We sold one. We looked a little bit lower. For four hundred and fifty dollars. Are you with me so far? Which tells us that this other that we are interested in, the other bicycle that we're talking about, we don't know which one it is, but whichever it is which, that they call it, that we are labeling as other, must have been sold for four hundred and twenty-five dollars. Are you with me so far in the story? Very good. So let's take a look at it here. Let's continue here. So this is the other part we're talking about the other that we sold for $425 so this is there is a demarcation and we pick up the story from here do you understand let's see what happens there are two possible scenarios the other that we sold for sold for 425 the other way that we sold for 425 let's put down 425 here and 425 here it's either, either A or B, bicycle A or B. 
we don't know which, it, which one it is. We have no idea which one it is that we are labeling as other, but it says we sold the other one for 425. Well, if it is A, A was bought for 250. So if we bought it for 250, 12 minus 5 is 7, we must have made a profit of 175. Or if the other, the, what we are calling it the other, is the, was the one that we bought for 375, 12 minus 7 is 5. Then in that case, we met the profit on the other of only $50. Out of these two answer choices, obviously only one of them going to be the answer choices and that's our answer. So we look at the answer choices and you will find that $50, the choice of $50 does not exist. It's not in the answer choices. This is what we are given. 175 is what we are given and that is our answer. Because these are only, there are only two possibilities how much profit we could have made on quote unquote other, either $50 or $175, depending on whether we sold A, bicycle A for $425 or bicycle B for $425. Whenever they give you something like this and they discuss the other, or on the other day, or the other person, they're just doing it to annoy you. Give them name, give these things name, whatever name you want to give them, doesn't matter. Uh, anything that makes sense to you, anything that makes sense to you. Anything that will help you remember which one is which. And that's what it is, it's just a matter of paying attention. Number 37. I make mistakes quite, quite often, obviously, on the blackboard, and I don't I don't uh, upload and I don't redo the video and upload the one without a mistake. I just leave them there because mistakes happen and mistake, I make mistakes because I sometimes don't pay attention and that's the only reason. The math is not complicated. I make mistakes because everybody makes mistakes because uh, attention lapses. Your attention must not lapse otherwise you will make a mistake. Okay, let's see what, let's see what we have here. So we have given a triangle here that looks something like this. A, B, C and D. And we are told that this is 120 degrees. And that's all that is given to us. Anything else, anything else that we're going to add to it, we're going to put it in a different color. So let's see. We are further told that A to C, A to C is 2. A to C is 2. A to C is 2. I just told you we're going to put it in a different color, but I'm not going to do it. A to C is 2. It's too annoying. They go on to tell us that B to D, B D is equal to D C. And that's equal to 1. B D is equal to B C. Let's find out where B D is. There is your B. B D is equal to C D. Oh, so there you go. So these are 1. And apparently B D C is an isosceles triangle. Not apparently, it is, because the two sides are equal. What else? Oh, well, there you go. Now we're going to change the color, because this is what is given to us, and now we're going to change the color, so we can see it. And because we are told that A to C is 2, and we are told that D to C is, D is 1, that means this guy must be 1. This is what we, what we gather from it. Are you with me so far? If that guy is 1, if this guy is 1, and this guy, we were told is 1, which means that A, B, D, triangle, triangle A, B, D is an isosceles triangle. I don't want to misspell isosceles. I don't know how to spell it. There you go. That makes it very easy. And this is 120. If this is 120, the sum of these two angles has to be 60, which means this is 30 and this is 30. Oh, we never wrote down what they're asking. What are they asking for? Measure of A, B, D. Angle A, B, D, which is A, B, D. They're looking for this angle, which is 30 degrees. Let's go to the next one. Number 38. Number 38. The penultimate angle, uh, penultimate 
an ultimate question on the page. Pn, Pn, and then ultimate. But uh, it's pronounced penultimate. It doesn't hurt to work on your vocabulary at the same time. Look it up and learn it. We did learn it at one time in our vocabulary lessons. I, I have a series of videos on vocabulary, and we learned it in those videos. I just don't remember which day it was. I'll tell you next time. Number 38. We are told that k squared is equal to m squared. The question is, which must be true? That's the thing. In other words, in other words, out of the five answer choices that, they, that they're giving us, out of the five answer choices that they're giving us, all five of them may be true. All of those five statements may be true, but there is only one statement out of those five which has to be true all the time, and our job is to locate that statement that must be true at all times. To say that that must be true at all times is redundant. It is redundant. If it's true at all the time, then it must be true. That's what they're looking for. Answer choice A says that k is equal to m. Now the best thing here, best thing to do here is to plug in numbers. You plug in numbers, recognize that this quantity is being squared and that quantity is being squared, and if a number is being squared, then by the time you square it, it's a positive quantity. It doesn't matter whether the original number is positive or negative. The squared quantity is positive. So just plug in something that makes it easier. Maybe, maybe k is positive 2 or maybe k is negative 2. We don't know. But in either case, k squared will be positive 4. And similarly, maybe m is positive 2 or m is negative 2. But in either case, it be 2. Here it says k is equal to m. But that may be true, that may not be true. Maybe one of them is one of them is positive, another one is negative, in which case it is not true. Statement A may be true, but not necessarily so. May be true, but not necessarily. The next one says same thing. K is equal to negative m. K is equal to negative m. If k happens to be negative 2, and m if not, m happens to be also negative 2, if also if k is negative 2 and m is negative 2, then it's not going to equal. Negative 2 does not equal positive 2. b is not the answer. c says that k is equal to absolute value of m. It doesn't matter whether m is positive or negative. This one claims that k is equal to absolute value of m. Absolute value of m is going to be positive 2. But what happens if k is negative 2? That's not going to work. d says that k is equal to negative of absolute value of m. That will only be true, that will only be true if k is negative 2. But what if k is positive 2? If k is positive 2, then negative, negative of absolute value of m, whether m is positive 2 or negative, it doesn't matter. Whether m is positive 2 or negative, it doesn't matter. Abs we put a negative in front of it, it becomes negative. It is no longer true. It's not true. The answer, of course, is E. Answer, of course, is E, because absolute value of k would have to equal absolute value of m, regardless of whether these quantities are positive or negative. Even if one happens to be positive and the other one happens to be negative, it will make no difference because the absolute, absolute value will take care of it. So even if one is positive one is negative, you take the absolute value and 2 equals 2. The answer is E. The answer is E. Number 39. Number 39. Number 39 says that M, N, and P got total of $780. They did some job, these three people, M, N, and P. Uh, they did some job and they're calling them M, N, and O. But if you write O, O is very easy to get confused with zero. So I called him P. I gave him a new name. I christened him P. They got a total of $780 for having done some job. And don't waste your time trying to read those names properly. Uh, they all they give weird names. Do you understand? Just make up something. Just make up any any bloody thing that you please. Anything that works for you. Do you understand? And we are told that each one of these people, 
each one of these person rather rather not people each one of those each one of these persons was paid because each is singular was paid in proportion to the number of hours work question is how much oh well I haven't told you how many hours they have worked we are told that M M worked 15 hours N worked 20 hours and P worked 30 hours the question is how much did M get how much money did M get they did not get equal amount they did not take $780 and divided it equally among the three people because they did not do equal amount of work the one who got the most one who put in the most hours will get the most money one who put in the least hour will get the least money they're dividing it strictly proportionally strictly proportionally so let's find out first how many total number of hours they work because that's going to determine what proportion they're going to get so if we add them up we get five and we get six 65 hours they work totally we're looking for M. We're not interested in N or P. We're not going to waste our time with it. We just want to look for M. M we know worked 15 hours. He worked 15 hours of a, out of a total of 65 hours. And therefore, that's the proportion he should get. 15 65th of 780. He should get 15 65th of 780. I don't know why my marker is getting so light. In the new video, I'll have to change it. Oh, we don't, I don't want to erase anything. We can do it here. So let's pick up speed, shall we? Should we do it in a different color? Let's get going. It doesn't matter how, which order you go or how, which number you decide, just do whatever whatever comes to your mind. I see a 5. This is a multiple of 5. This is a multiple of 5. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 15 is going to become 3. 6 says 1, 5. 6 says 1, 5. After I take away 5 from the 6, you have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 5. It becomes 15 and 15 has 3 fives. Now, when you see 13, 13 is the prime number, obviously. You see that. And you shouldn't freak out. You should immediately ask yourself, is 68 a multiple of 13? I don't know. Or rather, 78. I don't know. I don't go around memorizing the table of 13, but I do know 13 fives are 65. That I do know. How do I know it? Because I know half of 130 is 65. 10 30s, 10 13s are 130. 10 times 13 is 130. That's I do know. I'm not, I'm not that big of a dummy. And I also know that half of that is 65. So that's 513. Let's add one more 13, see what happens. Oh, voila, what do you know? Which means this must be 613. Let's divide top and bottom by 13. 78 has 613, and 0 has no 13. 0 has no 13. There you go. How much does M get? M is going to get $180. This guy M is going to get 3 times 60 is $180. That's how much we should pay him based on the number of hours that he put in. And if M is getting $180, $180, can you quickly tell me how much will P get? Well, P should get $360, twice as much, because he put in twice as many hours. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. This, this is the end of the page, so we can stop right here. Tomorrow in the next video, we'll go back to data sufficiency problems, alright? And we'll keep making progress on both of them uh, together. If you found this helpful, and if you wish to get hold of me, if you wish to work with me, uh, if you want to hire me as a tutor, as I told you before at the beginning of the video, Send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.